Well, hi there, and welcome once again to In Search of Christianity, brought to you by Bible Talk. As we bring you a special edition of our study in the prophet Amos, our 21st time in the prophet Amos, although this is not really a Bible study as much as it is. You know, let me, let me just go back here. When we, when we started this study in Amos many, many, many weeks ago, I said that it was a last day's study. Prophecies of the last days of the kingdom of Israel and also in God's plan, a prophetic message of the last days of the kingdom of this world. And I said that there was going to be a, a change from Bible study to prophetic. And I, I said that in faith. Well, right now, the message that I want to bring is not as much a Bible study as it is prophetic. You know, in our last program, we looked at, at even God's people perishing because of their lack of knowledge of him how he had previously brought judgments on them, famine and droughts, storms and plagues and destruction of cities with no result. Over and over and over, the Lord says, yet you have not returned to me, even though he did these things. We read, the, we, we finished our last program reading from Hebrews chapter 12 about the discipline of the Lord sent to correct and to result in holiness, or if rejected, sent to be the punishment and the wrath of God. When I began to pray to get ready for this for this study, um, I, I I just I, I want to really be prayerful about this. I went to where we left off in our last study in the eighth chapter of Amos. Okay. And I was getting ready to what I call prepare to do a, our regular Bible study. I went to the verses in Amos where we left off. And now that would be the ones that would be our starting point. Chapter 8, starting at verse 8. All right. And then now bear in mind that as I film this and as I bring this message Two days ago, Sunday night, October 1st, 2017, a country music festival was being held in Las Vegas, Nevada, here in the United States. You know, Las Vegas, that city has been glorified in its reputation as, and this is what it's called, Sin City. And it's anything goes attitude since it was given life by gangsters in the mafia in the 1940s becomes the slogan, the boasting point of the, the Chamber of Commerce and the Bureau of Tourism for Las Vegas. They say, you know, what happens here stays here. You can basically, you do whatever you want here. It's not going to, it's not going to follow you. Well, a couple of days ago, this past Sunday, 22,000 people had gathered there for the final night of the third day, the final night, the third day of the Route 91 Harvest Festival. That's a country music festival. As I'm sure you know, before that party ended, 59 people were dead and more than 525 others were wounded. This nation was left wondering and debating about what to do to end the evil that has become all too common in our times as the festival ended with death. And then I opened up to where we left off, as I said. And I read from Amos chapter 8. I want to read you from Amos chapter 8. I want to read. Look at now I'm reading from the New American Standard from verse 8 and from verse 10. Because of this, will not the land quake and everyone who dwells in it mourn? Then I will turn your festivals into mourning and all of your songs into lamentation. And I will make it like a time of mourning for an only son. And the end of it will be like a bitter day. Now, you know, I, it just so happened that I was looking at a Christian magazine a little while ago today. And they were talking about in, in light of this tragic event. And it was. 
they were saying, what are, what are the most common verses that people are quoting? And they were talking about God's compassion and God's love. And nobody quoted this verse. I will turn your festivals into mourning and your songs into lamentation. But you know what? That's exactly what happened. That's exactly what happened. Now, here in America, everybody is ramping up the very contentious arguments on both sides about gun control, with the debate growing increasingly louder, more angry, forgetting that the anger of man does not accomplish the righteousness of God. And you know, you can talk about the, the guns that were in the hands of this killer, but it was not what was in his hands that was the problem. It was what was in his heart that was the problem. Now, I'm going to sit here, I'm going to tell you, I don't know what was in that man's heart. I don't know what motivated him. Nobody does at the moment. The investigators are going to work diligently to find that out, to try and determine, you know, what, what this was all about. But I'll tell you what I do know. I don't know what was in his heart, but I do not, I do know what was not in his heart. The love of God was not in his heart. You know, the Apostle Paul wrote to the church in Rome, and he said that the love of God, speaking to believers, the love of God has been poured into our hearts through the Holy Spirit. The love of God will not motivate an act like this. So Jesus said, no man can serve two masters. You'll hate the one and you'll love the other. Satan is the adversary. Now, Amos goes on in the, in the next verse, in verse 11, to say, Behold, the days are coming, declares the Lord God, when I will send a famine on the land, not a famine for bread or a thirst for water, but rather for hearing the words of the Lord. Can you hear the word? Now, I, I, when I say hear it, it's not like, you know, you, the, the words can go by. They can go in one ear and, you know, the old expression, go in one ear and out the other. Can you hear it? Think about what Jesus said in the Gospel of Matthew, which recorded, in their case, the prophecy of Isaiah is being fulfilled, which says, you will keep on hearing, but will not understand. You will keep on seeing, but will not perceive. For the heart of this people has become dull. With their ears, they scarcely hear, and they have closed their eyes. Otherwise, they would see with their eyes, hear with their ears, and understand with their heart, and return, and I would heal them. I'm certain that the political battle is going to rage for a long time to come, should the Lord tarry. But the battle is still not against flesh and blood, but against spiritual forces of wickedness. And there's only one way to deal with that. If you're a Bible-believing Christian, please hear these words. Submit, therefore, to God. Resist the devil, and he will flee from you. James 4, 7. Fighting the evil one without submitting to the Lord can only have one result. I don't know. I'm, I'm just going to paraphrase this from, from Acts chapter 19. If you know the, the account of the sons of Sceva, the priests, in, in, in the time of the New Testament, when they were seeing these sons of seven sons of Sceva, they were seeing the apostles and they were seeing the power of God working through them. They were seeing them cast out demons. So they went and they, they confronted a man who was filled with evil spirits. And they said, they said, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I adjure you by whom Paul preaches. And they tried to cast the demon out. They tried to get rid of the evil. But you know what? It says that the evil spirit answered and said to them, I recognize Jesus and I know about Paul, but who are you? And the man in whom was the evil spirit leaped on them and subdued them and overpowered them so that they fled out of that house naked and wounded. It just got worse. What we need in this country, it's not about gun control. It's not about better policing. What it is about is about we are a country that lacks being submitted to God. And as long as we are not submitted to God as a nation, we will not be able to resist the devil. He will not flee. He will stay and he will have an almighty party as he did the other night. 
The problem is the church. We are to be the salt of the earth, the light of the world. We are supposed to be there standing against evil, and we're not. We're too far interested in, in what we can get. We can, we're too far interested in, in building our great, big, beautiful buildings where Jesus said, you know, the whitewashed tombs filled with dead men's bones. We need to submit to God. Can you hear that? We need to repent, fall on our faces. Have you never heard the verse in Chronicles? Second Chronicles 7, 14. That if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves, will seek his face, will turn from their wicked way, then he will heal the land. We sit here and condemn the evil while we do it ourselves. What we need in this country right now is for, for people to submit to God, to fall on their faces and repent. Otherwise, what you have seen, well, I'm not going to say otherwise because it's not going to happen. This is why Jesus prophesied and said that in the last days, the violence would increase. Lawlessness is going to increase. Men's heart will, hearts will fail because of, of the violence. America, repent. America, repent. The judgment of God is upon us. That's all I have to say. God bless you and goodbye. So I cherish that old rugged cross Till my trophies of the best I may die I will play